How is it going, boys and girls? Welcome back to Key West Waterman. My name is Aaron Young. <clears throat> it's actually New Year's Eve. Madeline and I got in late last night, like 2 a.m. Went up to Central Florida and spent some time with family, which was really nice. Get away, change of pace. Um, but we got back late last night, and today was actually supposed to be kind of windy, and it, I woke up and it just ended up being this gorgeous day and Malin's doing some real estate stuff so figured I'd run out and grab some fish if you watched a couple episodes ago um, the Bob Ross episode I lost a really really nice snapper on rod and reel I just watched that on top water. It's a. Oh. It was just too big. I was on too light a tackle and I couldn't stop the fish. Um, so I wanted to come back out and take a look with a spear gun and see if I could find that fish. But I brought two guns. A little bit bigger gun. This is like a 48 fat back, and this is actually the first gun I ever built. A true mid handle murky water gun, and I'm glad I brought this. The water. From the surface looks a little bit clear but can actually be deceiving i can tell once i get in it's going to be a little foggy so i'm going to hop in with a murky water gun the idea of this is the handle is what we call a mid handle the handles in the middle of the gun the trigger is actually back here so i get a, quite a bit of band stretch i just swim around because it's murky load it and i swim around with it under like this if you have a big long gun out in front of you um, you can spook the fish before you get to it but this gun's nice because i can sit tuck it right under my arm just kind of hit fire, but enough talking, let's get in the water and take a peek. Ooh. Welcome back underwater, everybody. As always, I'm going to share some of my thoughts on these dives couple scenarios and as far as getting started in spearfishing goes um, I think mangrove snappers are probably one of the best species you can practice on one they're delicious two the populations are extremely healthy and three you can see how shifty they are um, there's not a lot of them that there are some but not a ton of times they're just going to completely sit still for you and I think it's a great way to practice um, lining up and tracking fish uh, it's just a very good species to start with if you are a beginner you see you have a nice one come in right here just gave me a short window of that broadside just wasn't ready so I didn't take it and as always I like to keep YouTube land real this video took place over about five hours I swam around for quite a long time see a big wave of them come in and kind of just couldn't pick one couldn't decide that one gave me kind of an odd angle a quick window just wasn't ready again these are great great species to practice on if you're just starting out so I had a few, seen a few got the jitters out this nice one comes in and no hesitation on that one got a good shot These really help with your reaction time because I always tell people to be efficient. You have to be able to identify size and line up your shot in a fraction of a second. Um, and on these mango snappers, they make you do that. This is pretty cool. Big giant ball of pilchards. You can see quite a few mangroves hanging on just kind of on the outside. Maybe that's why they're all in this area. I normally don't see this many on this spot. Um, but I mean, I saw tons, I saw hundreds of legal snappers. I was just kind of waiting for some bigger ones. Just waiting, waiting, waiting until he gives me that broadside and patience pays. Here 
here's a shot. You can kind of see where I'm sticking that knife. A lot of you guys asked that. I brain and bleed everything. And it was kind of murky, so I didn't want to keep these on me. I decided to swim them back to the boat. So I've got some actually really nice snappers in the boat already. And the reason I came out here is I wanted to dive that corner where I uh, hooked that big snapper last time. And I know he's not going to be sitting there, but part of me wishes he would be because it'd be cool. These islands are pretty big and elaborate, so I know a lot of these fish move around. But I'm excited to swim over there and see what's beneath the surface. So if you watch that, like I said, that Bob Ross video, this is right where my boat was sitting. I was kind of pitching those baits just around the corner on the edge of this uh, tree right here. You'll see I pull the camera out, and that's the actual tree that that fish swam into. So this was pretty exciting. And I'm swimming up to it, and I'm not seeing a single fish. <laughs> I'm kind of perplexed, and I know they do move around quite a bit. I just I thought there was going to be more sitting right here. So I continue on. And it seems on this day, they were just a little farther around the corner. And I know it's hard to tell, you can just see how many come in. It's hard to tell sizes here. Um, pretty much every one of these, for the most part, is legal. There's a couple short ones in there, but a lot of these bigger fish are 16, 17, 18 inches. And I kind of got puppy fever. I was also kind of just waiting for one big one. I knew there had to be, or just I thought there had to be one big one somewhere around. I was just trying to be patient. I know that if I unload my gun, it's gonna start uh, create commotion. And that big one's probably gonna come in and check it out after I shot. So I just was just trying to wait it out. And I'll be honest, I'm so impressed with the GoPro's ability to make the water look cleaner than it actually is. I don't know why, but I can tell you, I can see a lot further in this video than I can actually see this day. It's very strange. drop the ball there yeah, I was just trying to be selective I was waiting for a big one with a hook in his mouth to swim by but there were some really really nice snappers there there were some that were over 20 inches without a doubt and we'll get another chance at them so I continued on honestly felt a little bummed and I'm coming around the corner and I'm going to play this clip full speed and then we're going to slow it down and talk about it because you will not believe what happens next. I'm trying to track this snapper and he just kind of darts off and they see a really big one next to him. And you'll hear my reaction. It was the snapper that I lost two weeks ago. <laughs> I can't make this up. I promise this is all in real time. I didn't chop this clip up or this editing up to make it seem like it was in order. So the snapper just to the bottom right of where my spear is pointing, it's about an 18 inch mangrove. Got a good sight on him and I'm trying to just wait till he comes back around and it decides it's going to dart out and come around uh, back behind me, which is not uncommon. They do that quite a bit. But when it does this, it runs me into another fish that I didn't realize was even there because I was honed in on this snapper. So I'm gonna pause this real quick. Look to the left, you'll see how tall this tail is compared to that snapper. I know the other one's a little further behind it, but look how tall the tail is, far left of the screen and the size of this snapper. Now look in the bottom left of this snapper's jaw, you're gonna see a little black dot. 
that is literally my jig that I lost two weeks ago when I hooked that fish. The video is a little blurry, but I saw it firsthand. It was without a doubt the same fish and my jig in its mouth. I could not believe it. Unfortunately, it darted. I never saw it again. I searched for it for a while, but um, I thought it was really cool to see that fish again, which means I will definitely be back um, try and take another peek at this fish maybe later. You don't want to go too often because you will spook them and they'll get harder to find. But I gave that corner a break <clears throat> and I wanted to come back around and just see if I could get one of those nicer fish, those 18, 19 inch snappers and um, just kind of cruising around, waiting patiently. And this nice one comes and pokes his head out on the underside. And I took a shot and it stuck. a nice mangrove that's <clears throat> every bit of 18 inches one sec i don't have this on a mount um oh i hope that camera picked that up <laughs> i cannot believe i saw that fish again it had my jig literally right here in the corner of his mouth still um but it was going so fast it just kind of came right across and i don't know if the camera picked it up but hopefully it did but um either way that was a, such a fun dive uh, it was cool to even be able to see that. And when I first pulled around that corner, the amount of amount of legal mangrove snappers was uh, quite unbelievable. And I was just kind of being selective, trying to wait for that one really big one, and uh, I never ended up getting a shot on one of the big ones. But this is a decent one compared to the ones I saw, and this one's 18 inches, so that'll tell you how big some of those other ones were. Um, but I've got three off here. Instead of just swimming around and continue to spook them, um, if I can on every trip, I try to at least check one new spot, just do a little exploration. So I'm going to run uh, down a little bit and hop in on an area I haven't dove before and check it out. Nice and relatively clear. So this is a new spot I have not dove. And if you're wondering what makes me pick a new spot, um, quite honestly, I just pick a random island. If you look around down here in the Keys, there are literally islands everywhere. And I know that I've never dove this one, so figured I'd give it a look. It's always so exciting jumping in on a new spot. You never know what you're going to see. I get all giddy every time. And a friendly reminder, if you're not new to the channel or if you are new to the channel, new episodes every Mondays at 6 p.m. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I'd be happy to get to them. So I hadn't been seeing a lot, a lot of small snappers on this spot, which I always love to see. It just means the populations are healthy. There are mangroves everywhere. I mean, it's probably gotta be one of the most healthy fisheries we have down here. But one nice one did come in. It was pretty curious. I just tried to wait until he gave me that broadside and luckily enough, I got the stone shot, which I love. I know sometimes it can kind of be hard watching these. I genuinely feel for every fish that I take. Um, so anytime I get a stone shot, I love that just because it, it does put them out of their misery instantly, which is preferred. I wish every stock shot could be a stone shot.
But here's another shot on that bleeding angle. I just run my knife right, right under those gills. And you can see how quickly that blood comes out. That's my first fish ever here. It's a nice one, I will take it. So I just actually ended up swimming around the entire island. Um, saw a ton of snappers, just mainly small ones, which again isn't necessarily a bad thing. And I was literally coming right back up to the boat. I was about 50 feet from the boat and I had one other nice one just come in, kind of check me out and stayed broadside. And that was my snapper limit. Plenty of fish for the week. Wow, <clears throat> that was pretty wild. I don't know that the camera picked it up. I gutted that snapper. There wasn't a frigate in sight. I gutted that snapper and there's about 10 or 11 of them. And they were coming down so fast their wings were making like this oh, sound. Kind of like a hum. That was weird. I've never seen that before. That was really cool. Um, new spot. It's a little slow. I honestly saw a lot of small fish. Um, the tide's pretty low, so maybe it's because uh, there wasn't a lot of water, so some of the bigger ones had pushed out, but I uh, was able to get two nice ones to wrap it up. They're very nice snappers. Um, I didn't get the big one I was after, but it just gives me a reason to come back, I think. Which I definitely will be back after that fish again that was so cool seeing that same fish if you didn't see the video go back um, I'll put a link or whatever for it in the description it was a couple weeks ago I hooked a really big fish on the surface and I saw it and I actually could still see that hook in his mouth but that is all I have um, I'm not gonna do a recipe on this one um, got some stuff I gotta take care of tonight <clears throat> some exciting stuff coming up Tomorrow is New Year's Day, which comes with some new seasons. I know a lot of you guys have been asking for some deep drop stuff, which I haven't done in some time, but I'm actually going to attempt some commercial deep dropping tomorrow on January 1st. Uh, Snowy Grouper and Tile opens for uh, the commercial harvesting. So stay tuned. We're going to keep making videos as long as you keep watching them. I do appreciate y'all coming along. Enough of me talking. Enjoy the rest of your evening, and I will see you guys on the next one. Later.